as a fan of the sport and as the middleweight champion of the world, that's a fight that gets me more excited. You know, taking somebody's O, taking, you know, I've beaten Strickland before and I know I'll beat him again. So, you know, getting that comes out fight, that, that gets me excited. I think the whole world, the fans wants to see it. So the fight the world thinks is the best next fight, that's what I want. So, yeah, I think the comes out fight is 100% what I want. You know, the UFC is going to do what they're going to do. But, you know, from a fan perspective and from a fighter's perspective, I think Hamza uh, should get the next shot. The betting odds just came out and Hamza Shemaev is a 2-1 to one favorite against Drikas Duplessy. Champions usually are not near 2-1 to one underdogs. That's crazy. But it speaks to the confidence that the odds makers have for Hamza Shemaev winning that fight and becoming the new middleweight champion. And you heard it there in the interview. Drikas Duplessy is not shying away from that challenge. He wants to fight Hamza Shemaev next. Say what you want about Drakus Duplessis, but you have to respect this champion. He's saying even though Sean Strickland has been the fight that people have been wanting for his next one, but he wants a tougher fight. He wants to become the first man to defeat Hamza Shemaev, which is stylistically the more difficult fight as well. In fact, earlier in the year, the betting gods were that Hamza would end the year as champion. And after what he just did to Robert Whittaker, you would think most fighters would not want to fight Hamza, especially those that are above him in the rankings. But no, Drikus wants to go head first to Hamza, and he's becoming kind of like a rare champion these days. You know, he's one that's not ducking any opponents. He is willing to fight anybody. He even said if the UFC wants him to fight Strickland, he'll fight Strickland too. But he'd rather fight the more difficult fight. He'd rather fight Hamza. This is kind of like unique in the UFC at this point. There's also Bilal Muhammad. I know a lot of people don't like Bilal. Um, a lot of people think he's boring and stuff, but the one thing you have to respect about Bilal is that he was willing to fight Shavkat and not wait an entire year to do so. Drikas is another fighter like that as well. And the thing is, Drikas thought Robert Whitaker was going to be Hamza. And even though Robert Whitaker lost faster and easier than any of his losses in his entire career, he's never been submitted in the first round. The only time he's ever finished in the first round was against Wonderboy in the welterweight division before his prime. Nobody ever beat Robert Whitaker the way the Hamza did. And it's commendable that Drikas wants to fight him because in that position, when you're the champion, you've defended your title and you beat the legends, Israel Adesanya, and Robert Whitaker, and you had a split decision win against Sean Strickland, which a lot of people do think that Strickland won the fight. That's a big reason as to why Strickland could even get a rematch here. Drickus could just do the rematch. He can take the easier fight on paper or the less dangerous fight in not fighting Hamza Shemaev, right? Stay on top as long as possible. Make more money with more title defenses before you fight someone like Hamza. Drickus can absolutely, if he wanted to, say that he would rather fight Strickland. And if he were to say that, I'm sure the UFC would also grant him that rematch against Strickland, right? It is a fight that Dana said before, it's the next middleweight title fight, most likely, right? Strickland is next. That's what Dana said. And if Drickus wanted to tell Dana, hey, you said that Strickland's next. We talked about Strickland being next. Let's fight Strickland first. It'll wait for Hamza later. He can hope that Hamza would fight some other contender in the meantime, right? Because Hamza talked about how he wants to be active as a fighter. He doesn't want to wait out and just not be active anymore. He wants to fight. And he said, regardless, he will eventually become the champion. He says right now he gets paid more than some of the champions. So it doesn't matter to him to wait for the title fight. So Drikas absolutely could stall a Hamza Shemaev, hoping he would fight someone else and hope that someone else would beat Hamza. But Drikas wants to be the one that beats Hamza first. Like, his fighting style is crazy, right? His fighting style is very, very unique, and so is his mentality. You don't see a lot of champions these days willing to do that. They have an opponent that was supposed to be next for them, and they said, no, give me the tougher matchup instead. Hamza Shemaev is unstoppable. His wrestling cannot be countered. It cannot be defeated. He's the scariest, most dangerous fighter in the middleweight division. He's the guy that's supposed to win the title and beat me as champion. Give me him next. I want to fight that guy first. Now, that's not to say he would beat Hamza. The mentality is strong for... Drikas Duplessis, but does he actually beat Hamzat? I don't know. It's also Hamzat's toughest fight in the weight class. When you look at every single contender, I think Drikas is the toughest fight for Hamzat as well because he's very physically strong. This is something that Alexander Gustafsson has talked about before about Hamzat. Hamzat is so strong and he's probably gotten even stronger ever since because he came back up to the middleweight division with a new training camp. So Hamzat's probably even stronger than ever before. Stronger than when Gustafsson was talking about it years ago. But Drikas is the only fighter that can fight against that strength from the first round to the fifth round. He's He's also well-rounded. Not the most um clean technique you've ever seen, but he's well-rounded in his own unique way, right? He can um strike in his windmill style and uh, knock opponents out and even rock Adesanya in the stand-up. He can take opponents to the ground like he did against Robert Whitaker with the trip and the clinch. He's very good on top. He's actually the most technical when he's on the ground on top of his opponent. Very good with transitioning, very good with ground and pound, great submissions. If we don't even know if Hamza has that cardio issue anymore because the last time we saw Hamza fatigue 
get a fight was against Kamaru Usman. And Hamza said that he was sick in that fight. He has a new training camp, much better coaching, much better teammates, and much better just athletes around him. They are going to stop him from overtraining. And the other time that Hamza was fatiguing was in the Gilbert Burns fight. But the fight was so incredibly fast paced at a lower weight class. We do have to remember that Hamza cut a lot of weight for that fight. Hamza is a natural middleweight. So I think his cardio should be better than what it was at welterweight against Gilbert Burns. But it is yet to be seen, you know, when he's the the best first round fighter we've ever seen in the sport. And I think that. I think he's better than, or at least more dangerous than the other great first round fighters like Jose Aldo, like um, Michael Chandler, Zabit, and various other fighters, Rumble Johnson. I think Hamza is probably the most effective in what he does. Get that first round finish, whether a knockout against Gerald Mearshart or submitting the opponent like against Robert Whitaker, Li Jing Liang, and various other opponents. But I'm really liking Hamza the way he's approaching these fights now with a new training camp, with a calmer demeanor. And he said he was calm against Whitaker because there's nothing to be angry about or upset about when fighting Whitaker. He's a good guy. Everybody respects him. Hamza greatly respects Whitaker as a legend in the game. But we'll see if he's the same against Drikas Duplessis, who is going to trash talk him, which is what he did against both Strickland and Adesanya. He really digs in deep with the trash talking. And, and I think he probably would do the same thing against Hamza. Drikas understands the importance of mental warfare in fighting. And if he could throw off Hamza a bit to try to gas him out in the first round, right? Talk a bunch of trash. Hamza might start the fight very fast, try to finish him, maybe rely a lot more on his strength and just get away from the game plan, which we've seen him do before against Gilbert Burns, but for a different reason, right? Against Burns, he was trying to knock him out, believing that Burns doesn't have a chin and couldn't brawl with him. So the power would eventually get him a quick finish, which I think Hamza, if he stayed more disciplined in the fight, if he was more composed and sticking behind the jab, just like he did in the first round, he would have had an easier fight against Gilbert Burns, right? If he listened to his coaches more and didn't brawl with Burns, I think he would have won the fight a lot more comfortably. But the thing is, who talks trash like that to Hamza? I think Hamza does have a strong mental. I don't think he's going to become a worse fighter because Drikas starts talking trash and maybe talks about Kadyrov and all that stuff, but it would make the fight a lot more interesting with the mental warfare between Drikas and Hamza because with Hamza most of these fighters are only competing with him physically they're not really trying to get into the side of mental warfare which in fact most champions don't do these days look at all the champions which ones focus on the mental warfare as much as they do on the physical warfare Jones sometimes but he doesn't fight that often Tom Aspinall does not Alex doesn't Drikas does Blow does right he did it against Leon and he probably will do it to his opponents moving forward not in the same way right he'll make jokes and he usually like befriends his opponents he has that kind of personality it's hard for his opponents to hate Islam. He's a very likable guy. Ilya Taporia does, but in a different way. He kind of builds himself up, right? He doesn't trash talk his opponents to get in their head as much as he builds himself up before the fight. Marab, not really. Pantoja doesn't. Drikas Duplessis is the best trash talker in the sport right now. He's the best at mental warfare, but it hasn't affected his opponents in the fight, right? Strickland didn't fight much differently. Adesanya fought well, right? He didn't fight differently either. We'll see now with Hamza with what he says to him, and if that changes the fight in any way. I don't think it will. I think Hamza will fight well, regardless of what Drikas comes at him with in the press conference. Man, that's gonna be such a great fight. I cannot wait for Drikas Duplessis versus Hamza Shemaev. It's probably gonna be next year, if that is the fight that UFC would do, and I think they probably would. You know, Hamza's a bigger star than Strickland. I think it's a big fight. It's a more entertaining fight, right? Way more exciting. He just ran through Robert Whitaker, whereas Strickland had a kind of a boring decision win against Paulo Costa, right? Lesser opponent than Whitaker, not as good of a performance. And the main thing that Strickland has that's holding him onto that rematch is the fact that he arguably beat Drikas right? It was a very close fight. But now that the champion is saying that he'd rather fight Hamza, it's probably going to be the bigger fight. It's going to draw more pay-per-view buys. It most likely will be in Abu Dhabi or Saudi Arabia. Maybe the UFC would like that as well. Like there's various different things that the UFC would benefit more for giving Hamza the title fight over Sean Strickland. And it seems like the fans want it too, right? That's the most important thing. The fans want Hamza versus Drikas more than Strickland versus Drikas. Who would I rather see? I'd rather see the Hamza fight. I think it's more exciting. We saw the Drikas and Strickland Strickland fight before. It was good, but it wasn't like insanely entertaining. I think the Hamza and Drikas fight would be the most entertaining fight you can possibly have at middleweight. There's not a single fight more exciting than that. Bring in Barolo, bring in Imavov, Whitaker again, Strickland, Adesanya, any of these guys. There is no fight more exciting that get you jumping out of your seat more than Drikas Duplessis versus Hamza Shemaev. Imagine how that fight goes. Hamza comes out there, 
fakes the punch, goes for a takedown, just like he does against almost everybody he fights. Drickus, showing his strength, defends it a little bit, maybe gets taken to the ground against the fence after. A little bit of resistance. He starts scrambling with Hamza. Hamza gets on top, lands some ground and pound. Drick is able to escape at one point. Hamza goes for another takedown. Maybe he gets a finish, maybe he doesn't. Drickus survives the first round, goes into the second, starts landing jabs on Hamza, who's standing with Drickus a little bit more. Drickus is in the fight. He's landing shots. Hamza not moving his head as much. Hamza cracks him with a big right hand, exchange combinations. Hamza goes for a takedown. Drickus stuffs it. Drickus goes for a takedown. Hamza stuffs it. Like, that fight would be an absolute war, man. From beginning to whenever it ends. Whenever the finish is or even if it goes to a decision for the first time in Hamza's career. Five-round decision. That is the fight to make, in my opinion. And have Sean Strickland fight Kyle Barallo. You could do Isra Adesanya versus Nazardine Imovov. And then you could maybe do like Robert Whitaker versus either Brendan Allen, who's also coming off a loss, or Anthony Hernandez, who's coming off a very good win. So leave in the comments below. What do you guys think? Do you think the next fight is Hamza versus Drickus? Or is it Strickland versus Drickus? How do you think the Hamza fight would go? Who do you think would win? And how would you match up the middleweights moving forward? And I'll see you guys in the next video.